Good morning, everyone. We gather this new day, we pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves to once again come worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause to acknowledge our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. He came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, Now hope that sees for itself is not hope, for who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done marvels for us. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were the men dreaming Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with rejoicing. The Lord has done marvels for us. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done marvelous things. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done marvelous one. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, 
You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush. The birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again, he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Two beautiful readings with two simple points for the day. St. Paul reminds us the sufferings of the present. Time are as nothing when compared with the glory to be revealed for us. So every time I hear that reading from uh, Paul, you know, the glory to be revealed has got to be pretty awesome if the sufferings of the present moment are nothing. And, uh, If it be the sufferings we endure as we do live the life of faith, if it be the sufferings uh, that come to every life, but we remain faithful through them, I think all of us will agree there are many sufferings that all of us experience in life, particularly, I suppose, in the last couple of years. There's been many and varied sufferings for our nation and uh, our world. And sufferings as we live day in and day out, the truth of the gospel. So we keep our eyes fixed on, on uh, knowing that it's like the, a speck of dust, the amount of suffering we endure. It's like a speck of dust in comparison to the glory to be revealed in the kingdom of heaven. On the other end of the scale, we have uh, the other speck of dust, a little piece of yeast, little seed, mustard seed, the tiniest of all of the seeds. And we hear that that uh, tiniest almost speck of dust, when planted within us, can grow to be the largest, the strongest, the best. Simple question maybe is uh, day in and day out, why are you here? Why are you here? And I guess at some point in time, Somewhere, somehow, some seed was planted in you. You learn to come to daily Eucharist because uh, maybe your parents did. Uh, You made it a Lenten discipline one year. There's some reason, somewhere, why you decided to start coming here every day. Similarly, the same could be said for time spent in the Adoration Chapel. Somewhere, somehow, You learned to do that. Someone introduced you, and uh, it grew to be very strong. Very often when people will ask me how to start in their prayer life, you know, some will say, well, you've got to pray an hour a day. Well, that would be a wonderful gift, but I don't think you start there. (laughs) You know, you start with a couple minutes, (laughs) and you let those couple, maybe five minutes, uh, take its rooted seed within you, and uh, you see how it grows and becomes 10 minutes and 20 and a half hour and so on. The little tiny speck of faith, that seed, growing within each one of us. Maybe think where did it come from, how did it get planted there, and reflect a little upon how much has grown in your life. We think about that as we turn, we offer our needs, our intentions to the Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we do come before you keeping our eyes fixed on the glory that is to be revealed and not on the sufferings of the present moment. Please hear our needs and petitions and help us on our way for our church throughout the world, for all of the baptized to truly persevere through moments of suffering, keeping eyes fixed on the glory that is to be revealed. We pray to you, Lord. And thanksgiving for those who planted that seed of faith within our own mind, heart, and soul. And for blessings upon those who that seed of faith is just beginning to take root. For those in the RCIA process, for our young people, both in Catholic school and for family faith formation. For our young adults who had a wonderful weekend retreat and for all that uh, have these opportunities, that that seed of faith continue to grow strong, we pray to you, Lord. And for those who we've promised to pray, for those traveling, for their safety, for those in need of healing, for hope and that power, for those making decisions to do so with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, we pray to you, Lord. And for all of those who do lead our nation and world, that they may lead us in the truth of the gospel and see the path of the gospel to be the path to peace. For the many troubled areas of the world, particularly throughout the Middle East, where there is civil unrest, for our own border of the United States and Mexico, where there is continued trouble, and for the many troubled areas of the world for peace to abound, we pray to you, Lord. And for our seminarians at Christ the King, sorry, their old habits came back, St. Mary's in Baltimore. And uh, for all those in discernment, those in our very midst in our own parish who are in discernment of priesthood, diaconate, religious life, for all in houses of religious formation, those preparing for final vows and preparing for diaconate ordination, we pray to you, Lord. And for Kathleen A. Zemros, for whom the Mass is offered today, and for all the souls of the faithful departed to truly share in God's mercy and eternal life, we pray to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you the many needs spoken and treasured in the heart once again, we humbly pray, hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew pole so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. And mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Gregory the Great, and all of the saints of Plesia throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
name of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away thee, sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. We offer a prayer for renewal. In every age, O oh God, who have called us to be your people, to be your church, in this time we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you have entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.